No deal. Indianapolis coach Jonathan Taylor do not reach a deal today. Most likely to still remain on PUP. We talk about that on this No Horsing Around podcast. What is going on, No Horsing Around family? Zach Boyd back at it again. Jonathan Taylor will not be traded. Um, They weren't able to come to an agreement um, as far as that goes. And also, likely to remain on PUP. So that means out the first four weeks of the season, won't take up a roster spot as we're right here literally recording this live in real time. Uh, Just some quick initial thoughts, and we're curious to get your thoughts, your feelings on this saga, as it looks like it's going to continue. It's not going anywhere. Um, Neither side could get anything done. Um, I think this was, was probably a testament to him going out and seeing what his market value was. A- I don't think there was a team willing to pay him that long-term contract that he was wanting. B, the compensation simply wasn't there. They weren't going to be willing to do both things. As we kind of predicted here on this podcast, it's a big ask to ask a team to take on this huge contract and give up a very large amount you know, of compensation. And I believe Chris Ballard had every right to kind of stick to his guns here. I've been hard on him in the past. I think he's made some moves, in my opinion, that, that you know that he shouldn't have made. But that being said, I think this was the right move for Chris Ballard. If you don't get the value for this football player, you can't walk away in a small market and let a guy just leave without getting anything back. Look, at the end of the day, I think the, the Indianapolis Colts want to pay Jonathan Taylor to be their running back. I truly do. Now, I know his camp doesn't believe that. I know his camp is probably fuming right now. But Jonathan Taylor's been sold a bill of goods. You know, he's been sold this idea from his from his agent that he's going to get this record setting type contract and none of it has come to fruition. They've had many stances. They've tried many things. They've not practiced. It's been a bad attitude. It's, hey, I don't want to play. I'm injured. Well, I think it's today it kind of blew up in their face. Leverage goes back to the Indianapolis Colts. They have him under contract. He has to play football. And my question for you guys and for him and for just all parties involved How are you going to gain value by not playing games on the football field? The most valuable thing that you've done in the past is be on the field and show the NFL exactly who you are. You want to get traded or you want to get paid or you want both of those things to happen, then you have to be on the field and you have to perform. Unfortunately, you know, you're not happy. You want the deal. You want the security. I totally get that part. But the way it's been handled by both parties has really been in some ways toxic, if I'm being honest with you. Um, It's been rough for all parties involved. But that being said, I think the real move for him is to get back on the football field and play football and find a way, you know, to facilitate a trade by that trade deadline in October, if that's really what he wants. I would venture to say if he were to go on the field, he were to perform, show the Indianapolis Colts he is healthy, I would I would venture to say that, that Chris Ballard would be more than glad to go ahead and pay him, probably pay him more than anybody else in the league. You know, this is a guy who's over overpaid at linebacker, overpaid at interior guard. I don't think he would have any problem overpaying for a running back who he drafted, who he traded up for, who he truly believes in. But to be fair to the Colts and Chris Ballard and his teammates, he hasn't been on the field, and you just don't know what's going on with that ankle. Um, Very mysterious as far as that part goes. The Staga continues, but that being said, at least we know this initial soft deadline. I'm not going to call it a hard deadline because guess what? You know, he didn't end up getting – you know, traded here, and he still could be traded at any time. He's on PUP, um, and I I just don't see a team wanting to trade and give up those assets when you know you're going to miss the first month of your your season. Now, maybe something crazy happens and he miraculously gets taken off of PUP, but I don't expect it to happen. Adam Sheffer reports they plan on keeping him right there on PUP, so he wouldn't miss the first four games, wouldn't take up a roster spot as we get this final round of of initial cuts. Guys, let us know what you think. Light us up in the comments. Jonathan Taylor, him and his agent, are they right? Are they wrong? Are the Colts wrong? Are the Colts right? How do you feel about all of this? Let us know, and as always, go Colts.